Right off the top, tracking breaking news this morning. Thousands are without power in the city of Davenport. Now, due to this power outage, the Davenport School District is now on a two hour delay. A Vista says they are working on the issue and that power should be restored shortly. Of course, we will continue to track this ongoing situation throughout the morning here on Up With Crim and bring you the very latest both here on the show as well as our website, crim.com. But first, we're getting right to weather here at six o'clock. Let's get right to meteorologist Thomas Patrick. Hey, good morning, guys, and another day with rainfall this morning. I feel a bit like a broken record, but we can take comparisons to the weather we had on Monday where it rained for most of the day. That's pretty much the situation that we have for today as well. It is just a solid rainfall here this morning all across the inland northwest where you see some of these pockets of darker green, like closer towards the Palouse and towards Coeur d'Alene as well as Post Falls. That's where some we'll call it moderate rain is falling at the moment where it is pretty light here in Spokane again at the moment, but it's going to continue pretty much through the rest of the morning hours. We're standing at 40 degrees here in Spokane, and it's here or there across most of the area. We'll get into the mid 40s for today with that rainfall. Most of the day it should conclude somewhere between about three to five or six o'clock, so that'll be close to our end timing frame in terms of that rainfall. Once it's done, then we are actually done for the rest of this week. We'll show you how our temperatures will recover after we get rid of the rainfall heading into the weekend. Just a few minutes. Spokane police are investigating a drive by shooting that killed one person. Now this happened on the lower South Hill in an area just southwest of the Shriners Children's Hospital. This morning, Crim 2's Nicole Hernandez is live in that area and she's been following the story since yesterday morning. Nicole, what information do you have for us today? Channing, so several people yesterday morning woke up to gunshots here in the Lower South Hill area. Police say someone shot a man in the apartment buildings right here, right behind me. So the person that was shot, unfortunately, did die here on scene. Now take a look at this video here. Jenny Love recorded this video of the crime scene from her apartment. She's a neighbor. She saw this after police arrived. She told Krem too she's worried, though, because just a few weeks ago, another shooting happened just on the other side of her apartment building. It's a little scary, um, especially since it only happened a couple weeks ago that someone else was shot just around the corner from me as well. Um, so yeah, it's a little, I'm going to be definitely a little bit more aware of what's going on around me when I get home and when I leave home. Now, police are still searching for the shooter, but investigators don't think this was a random shooting. That means there's likely not any ongoing threat to this area. A spoken police, of course, are still continuing an investigation at this point. They are asking, though, anybody in this area to send in any information or video. If you have anything, you know anything, you can go ahead and call Crime Check. In Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, Crime 2 News. It's time now for your morning rush. More news in less time. We have new details in the deadly shooting in Hauser on Monday night that killed one man and hurt another. The Kootenai County Sheriff's Office says that 77 year old Dennis Rogers was shot and killed while investigating a fire on his own property. According to the sheriff, there is no indication that the shooter knew Rogers before shooting him. No charges have been filed. Well, a sense of normalcy for future college grads in person graduation is returning to community colleges of Spokane after two years of virtual and canceled graduations. Graduates will walk across the stage in person on June 17th. For students who did not get that in-person graduation during the pandemic, they're invited to join the commencement ceremony. Well, a big win for the WSU women's basketball team. Head coach Cami Etheridge was named Pac-12 Coach of the Year. The Cougs are 19 and 9 on the season, giving them a record number of wins for the program in the NCAA era. Washington State is tied for second in the Pac-12 and looking to return to the NCAA tournament. New this morning, REI workers in New York City voted to unionize, making them the first store to do so. After the vote, the company released a statement saying REI firmly believes that the decision of whether or not to be represented by a union is an important one, and we respect each employee's right to choose or refuse union representation. The store's workers voted 88 to 14 to unionize with the retail, wholesale, and department store union. The Southern Resident Orca family has a new member. The Center for Whale Research says a photo ID expert spotted the whales near Kelp Reef off San Juan Island and confirmed the addition to the J-Pod. 
Experts believe it was born within the past few days. The center's photos show the calf with its mother, J37. You can see it right there. And that's your morning rush. In Idaho, two bills related to voter laws passed through the House State Affairs Committee. So one of those bills would actually ban ballot drop boxes in Idaho elections. A county clerk told the committee that this gives voters a way to safely drop off their ballots without having to drive all the way to the clerk's office, which for some can be an hours long drive. If it's not broke, why are we trying to fix it? As far as I know, there have been no issues with ballot uh, box stuffing or I guess that's the issue that we're worried about or the safety of the ballots. Every clerk in my district is opposed to this bill. We have people that drive quite a ways. I've used these drop boxes. They're secure. The Heritage Foundation says significant voter fraud has not been found in Idaho since at least 2017. Now, the committee also passed a bill that would change the way people prove their identification. This will make it so that if you cannot show proof of ID, you can no longer sign your ballot. It would also require that voters present documents at polling booths to prove residency and citizenship in order to vote. Well, I believe this legislation has positive intention of continuing to keep Idaho elections safe and secure. It contains some flaws which lend themselves more to the disruption of the election process than to the securing of it. If both of these bills do pass through the legislature and Governor Little signs them, they would go into effect right away. Both of the bills have emergency clauses written into them. Another bill introduced this year would also eliminate Idahoans' ability to register to vote on Election Day at the polls. Opponents of these bills say that they make it harder for those who lack transportation to vote in elections. Now, Idaho Governor Brad Little says he does have some concerns about these bills. So Tim Pham has more on what the governor has to say. Yeah, Jenny, Governor Brad Little reacting to this, saying changing the way people vote concerns him. The biggest worry is the emergency clause that is written into the majority of the bills. It does concern me that you change the rules and that a whole bunch of the electorate would not be aware of that change. And I, I'm, we'll see what happens. I generally don't comment until I see the bills up here as what happens on them, what gets amended. But uh, I, I, I am concerned about changing the rules. The upcoming primary election that could be affected is set for May 17th, and the general election is on November 8th. The United Nations is working to further isolate Russia from the rest of the world as over one million people flee from Ukraine. Then later in the show, a trucker convoy passed through Spokane. What protesters say they hope to see in the future? And here's one thing you need to know about today's weather. Rain all morning long. It may be lighter, moderate in most places, but it's going to stay with us through at least the noon hour as we are tracking when the end of the rain will come later on today. It is time for your wake up call on this Thursday morning. The Batman hits theaters tomorrow and it's definitely a movie that fans have been waiting for. But get this AMC wants you to pay about $1.50 more to catch it on the big screen. So this morning we want to know if you would pay more to see a big blockbuster or will you just wait to stream it at home? You can text us at 509-448-2000 or use the hashtag up with Krim on social media. I don't know. It's oh, something about having free snacks at your house. Our director Dylan got a pre screening invite and it cost $25. Dollars. That's yeah, a lot that's of a money. Lie. <laughs> well, it might be a good day to stay inside and watch a movie because it is super rainy, but we give you a look at Coeur d'Alene right now. You can see it is wet roads on your commute to work today. We say good morning to you, Inland Northwest. Happy Friday Eve. The weekend is in sight. Let us know where you're watching from this morning.